Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome everyone in today's class for the first intermediate grade. Our textbook is uh, Super Goal 2 and today we have a revision on our first part of the third uh, semester. This lesson will be presented by me, teacher Mazna Harbi, and the sign language by Mr. Uh, Fawaz al Agil. So let's begin. Our revision today will be about uh, Unit 4, which is uh, what can you do there, pages from 26 until 33. So let's begin with our first lesson. Our first lesson in this unit uh, was uh, about uh, different places when we have talked about different uh, places and what can we do at each place. For example, we talked about uh, the first place, which is a hotel, and we said that the activities that we can do when we go to a hotel is that uh, we can stay at the hotel if we were visitors. Also, the second place we talked about is uh, the shopping mall, and we said that the activity we can do when we go to a shopping mall is that we can go shopping and meet friends at the mall. And the third one, which is at the gym, we said that we can work out at the gym. And the fourth one, at the bookstore, you can buy books. And number five, at the bank, you can open an account at the bank. And number six, the supermarket, you can buy fruit and vegetables. And also at the museum, you can visit and enjoy learning about history in the museum. And also you can walk or play at the park and you can buy a bus ticket at the bus station. So we talked about different places and also what kind of activities that we can do at those different places. And also you can eat at the restaurants and children can study at school and you can catch a plane at the airport. So a lot of activities can be done in uh, different places. Usually we can see in a town or a city. So we have also answered this question, which is a vocabulary question. Mark your favorite places in the pictures and say why you like them and what you do there. So we have talked about the 12, uh, 12 places we have talked about and I said that mention the activities or talk about the activities that you like to do at these different places. So also we have a comprehension exercise where I ask you to match activities and places and write down the number of each place. So according to the pictures we, uh, we have the seen in the beginning, what we need to do now is to match the places with the appropriate activity. For example, number one, what is the place where you can go shopping and meet friends? We said that it is a mall. And the place where you can buy books, it is uh, a bookstore. And the place where you can uh, sleep there, it is a hotel and you can open an account what that place is it is a bank and also you can take a bus it is the bus station and where you can fly to different places it is the airport and also we talked about the, the uh, section of pair work and we said that you can uh, make questions and answer them about different places for example when you ask about what can, uh, what are the things that you can do at a specific place. For example, the first one here, can I buy a new smartphone at the mall? This is how can you ask about the things you can do about a certain place. And also in the grammar we have talked about uh, model can and we said that we use the model can to express uh, two things, ability and possibilities. For example, an example of ability we can say I can speak English, but I can't speak Chinese. So this is about ability. This is expressing ability. And also for possibility, you can play golf at the resort. You can play golf at the resort. So this is about the possibility. This is something possible. You can do it. Or if it's the other, uh, uh, other way around, if uh, there is a th uh, something that you can do, you would say, I can't play football today, I'm studying for a test. So, as we have learned before, can could, you, uh, could be used for two things, ability and a possibility. 
Also, here we have an example on how can we form the sentence using can. We said that we start with a subject pronoun, after this comes the model can, and then a regular verb. We don't have to add anything to the verb. For example, we would say, I can speak. So here, as we have learned, we don't have to add anything. The same goes for when we use the negative form. We would say, I can't roller plate. I can't roller plate. So this is an example on how can we form a sentence when we use the model can. And also, uh, making questions simply as this, we said that if we want to make question using can, we of course start uh, with can as a, a question uh, word, and we use the subject pronoun, whatever the subject uh, uh, is, and also a regular verb. We don't have to add anything to the verb. And the answers, as we have learned with all tenses, the answer would be simple. Either we would say, yes, I can, or we would say, no, I can't. So this is how we form sentences and how we form questions with can. Also, uh, the other thing we have learned, which is uh, when we use like plus inventive. And we said that what do you mean by inventive is uh, using the uh, uh, preposition to plus a verb. And we said that in an affirmative sentence, we can use like plus inventive. We could have uh, uh, sentences similar to this. I like to read. I like to read. Also in the negative form, we can say, I don't like to read. I don't like to read. So we use like plus inventive just to express the things that we love, the things that we like. And also, how can we make questions with like and inventive? We, uh, we can make question using do or does. So we, using, uh, we are using do with I, you, we, or they. And we use does with he and she. Let's see examples here. We have uh, shown this example. Do you like to swim? Do you like to swim? And the answers will be like this. Yes, I do, or no, I don't. And the other question, does he or she like to swim? The answer would be yes, he does, or no, she doesn't. So this is how can we form sentences and also questions using like plus inventive. And also we have answered this question on uh, uh, or this exercise where we said that you need to complete these sentences with either can or can't uh, and adding the verb in parentheses. We said, uh, for example, if you remember, that uh, the first one would be Ahmed cannot come tonight. He is finishing an assignment. And how, if you remember, how did we say that in this sentence we should write uh, can't? Very well, we should write can't because here we have a completion. We don't have to write uh, or we don't uh, start answering until we finish reading the whole sentence. After we finish, then we can say that the answer is either can or can't. And also the other uh, number two, it's a question. Can Luke drive them to the mall in his car? And number three, the answer will be, we can't meet tomorrow afternoon. I'm going to the dentist. And number four, Mr. Swear can't see you now. I am afraid he is very busy. And number five, you can't speak in the library, but you can read. And number six, the last one, Ahmed can't stay very long. His friends are waiting for him. So we have answered this exercise and also we have learned how can we differentiate between using can and uh, can't. And also this interesting uh, exercise where we said that you can work with a partner and make questions and answer about these pictures. And also we said that you, by having a look, if you see the X mark on the picture, then use the word can't. And if you don't, then use can't. For example, can Fred, and we agree that we're going to use only one character name, which is Fred. Can Fred play basketball? By looking at the picture, there is no X sign. And we said, since we don't have X sign, then we can say, yes, he can. But if we face uh, an X sign, we would say, 
No, he can't. So let's see how did we answer the uh, following uh, sentences. So the first one, make sandwich, we come up with this question. Can Fred make a sandwich? And number two, ride bike. And we made a question, which is, can Fred uh, ride a bike? And here we answered both with yes. Why? Because there is no X sign on these pictures. And number three, we do, we do have a, an X sign. So here we said, can Fred ride, uh, ride a motorcycle? No, he can't. And number uh, four, using a laptop, can Fred use a computer? Yes, uh, he can. And next, uh, we have the last one, number five, ice uh, skate. Can Fred ice skate? No, he can't, because here, as we said, that we have uh, X uh, 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 on the picture. So, and also in exercise C, we said that ask a partner, use the pictures in exercise B about which activities can you do and which can't you do. As we have uh, seen in these uh, activities, ice skating, riding a motorcycle. So ask a partner or a family member, we agreed to do this, and about uh, whether they can do the same activities or not. And also, which activities do you like to do? This is for you. Write them in order of your preferences. What is the first thing that you like, the second thing you like, and so on. And also, we said that it's good to ask your classmates about what they can and cannot do. And write their names in the chart, take it, can or can't. So, for example, here we have the list of activities as we have learned. And I told you that you need to write the name of uh, the people you are interviewing, whether family member or classmate, and uh, take can or can't in front of each activities. We have activities like driving, playing basketball, cooking, riding motorcycle, using a laptop, and so on. Also, we have a listening exercise where we listen to ad about the new uh, town mall and we, uh, we wrote, uh, we answer it with writing either yes or no about the information we have heard and also about the uh, pronunciation of uh, can and can't and we said that there is a slight difference between pronouncing can or can't that uh, if you pay attention or if you listen very carefully, you can feel it. And also we had or we have read a conversation between Ali and Imad talking, uh, talking about uh, what are they planning to do. And we have read uh, that they are planning to play tennis on a certain day, which is a, a Saturday morning. Also we have answered questions that is uh, about you. Questions like, for example, do you like sports? And what uh, are the sports and games that you can play? And also, how often do you play them? And do you like to watch sports in TV? And which one? So these questions can help you to talk about or to learn more about your preferences and the things that you like about sport. Also, we have this interesting reading text about the places that we can visit in Saudi Arabia. And we have divided those places into three categories, if you remember. For example, places for environmental tourism, places for family beach holidays, and for cultural tourism. And also we said that compare your ideas with the text. So when you talk about the places that you can go or you can visit in Saudi Arabia, when, after you read the text, compare them and see if you have similar ideas. And also we have a couple of questions to answer about the text. For example, the new vocabulary or the new term, assets. What did we say about assets? It's benefits, good things, advantages. And also, what are some other words for uh, vision? So we have uh, talked about the uh, vision 2030. And so we said, uh, what other words can you have for uh, uh, this term? We have the words like dream, plan, hope, and imagination. And also, we talked about what is Saudi Arabia is doing to share its culture with citizens and visitors. And we have a lot of activities to talk about. For example, that the uh, text already mentioned. 
building hotels, roads, and museums, and also looking after the natural environment, and also building places where people can learn about the country's uh, history and build places where people can enjoy relaxing holidays. So this is what we have uh, read about the Saudi Arabia. And also what are the three types as we have mentioned of tourism that uh, the uh, text uh, focuses on. We talked about the environmental uh, tourism, the family beach holidays and also the cultural tourism and all of them is in Saudi Arabia. And also we uh, uh, answered a couple of questions about these three places. What are the places do you like the best? These are the places where that were mentioned in the text. So I asked you about uh, what, uh, or what do you prefer of these uh, places and tell me why. Also, to underline the example of the present progressive, so we said uh, that since we talked about the present progressive, so just underline any sentence that mentioned or has uh, an example of the present progressive. And we have answered it like this. So, for example, paragraph 2, we have the example of we are building, and paragraph 6, we are developing, and number 7, uh, at Al Ula, we are making. So this was an interesting exercise where we can detect the words that has a, a, um, a, pres a present progressive. And also for writing, we said that this is an interesting exercise where you can read an email and uh, talked about uh, and uh, read it and talk about uh, the content of this email and try to write similar one. And we said that it's important to learn the parts of this email. For example, how to greet and what is the main idea and how to close an email. And also we said that uh, research another resort in your country and complete the chart with the notes. So do your part. Imagine that someone will visit Saudi Arabia and you're going to uh, a reserve uh, a resort. For example, the location, maybe Saudi Arabia, and the type of resort, maybe cultural or environmental. We have chosen environmental and that was an example. And also what kind of activities we can do in an environmental resort. We said that you can play tennis, enjoy food from different restaurants, and also what you like about that place, if you are in a resort uh, for environmental purposes, you can say, I like the beautiful mountains around uh, the resort. Also, another uh, exercise, which is imagine that you are in a resort, write an email to a friend. And we said the same schedule that we have used or the same table, you can use this uh, information you have mentioned here in writing an email to a friend. And as a project, I ask you to design a brochure for a vacation resort that is similar uh, to this and you can present it to your classmate. The last part we have talked about uh, in this unit, which is the form, meaning and function. We have talked about gerunds and we said uh, gerunds, these are not verbs, these, these are nouns that acting or taking the form of a verb, ends with ing. For example, they spend their free time playing basketball. So playing here is a noun and not a verb. The, a verb in this sentence was spend. And you remember that we have talked about several examples uh, of this. And also that we said we use gerund usually after certain verbs like can't stand, dislike, enjoy, feel like, hate, like, love, prefer, and spend time. And for example, I dislike driving, I feel like swimming, I often spend time reading, so we have read those examples. And also we talked about the inventives. We said that sometimes we use inventive after certain verbs. For example, hate, like, love, prefer, want, and would like. And here are the examples. For example, I would like to play. I prefer to study. I hate to wait. So these are the examples of the verbs that when we use them, we use after it the inventive. And also we have answered this, qu uh, this question, where can we differentiate between the inventive and gerund? And we said uh, that uh, some uh, time we can use them both, and some time, no, we can use only gerund and inventive. And how can we tell when can we use inventive? Where can we use uh, gerund, if you remember? We said that it's based on the verb. For example, here in uh, number, at, uh, number 11, we said that if we have the verb want, 
then what comes after want is an inventive and not a gerund. But usually we have some verbs that we can use after it both, gerund and inventive. For example, love. We can say on number nine we use love and what comes after love can be both a gerund like eating or an inventive like to eat. And uh, we had to answer the uh, questions. Also, we write about the likes and dislike using gerund. So here we said that uh, read those uh, verbs and write after it either gerund or inventive. And what do you write about? You write about the things that you like or the things that you don't uh, like. So now, we have reached the end of our lesson. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.